This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Patti Smith is a true icon. She's someone who rose to popularity with her first studio album, Horses, in 1975. She's also known for being Robert Maplethorpe's lover and muse. And she's also known for being a great activist and passionate about many causes, passionate about life. And she is a true artist in a sense that she takes every opportunity and every media that comes away to make art and to make the most out of it. And so today we're going to have a look at another face of Patti Smith, another Patti Smith, and we're going to be exploring her photography. And although her photography at first might seem simple, it has a lot of lessons and a lot to teach us. So without further ado, let's discover all of this together in a new video. Sometimes, if I crave silence, I turn to my Polaroid LAN 250 and the experience of taking Polaroids connects me with the moment. They are souvenirs of a joyful solitude. And these are the words that mark the beginning of Patti Smith's journey through the photography world. The craving for silence amidst a life full of music, sounds and white noise. She began as a visual artist, drawing and taking photographs since the late 1960s, before and while she was in a relationship with famed photographer Robert Maplethorpe. And it's important to refer Maplethorpe's influence in Smith's life, as the two, at the time impoverished artists, lived a unique relationship bounded by love as friends and lovers, love for art, their creative endeavors and mutual inspiration. And although many speculate that Smith learned about photography with Maplethorpe, when asked about what he taught her, she said, he taught me to have confidence in myself, to believe in myself. We met when we were 20. I wanted to be an artist, but wasn't sure if I was good enough. And Robert knew he was an artist. He never doubted he was an artist. He never said he wanted to be an artist. He only said he was one and he would not rest until I found the withal to not doubt myself. That was the gift he gave me. Even now, if I doubt myself or wonder if I'm on the right track, I think of him and I get my courage and my self-esteem back. When I was eight, my mother gave me Songs of Innocence by William Blake, a collection of his poems and drawings. I was enthralled by it and began writing and illustrating my own little stories. In my early 20s, I made large drawings intertwined with language. At some point, I wanted to hear what I had written. So I performed my work, merging the words with electric guitar. Language, image and performance, all striving for the same thing, a desire to communicate. I first took Polaroids in the early 1970s as components for collages. And in 1995, after the death of my husband, I was unable to center on the complex process of drawing, recording or writing a poem. The need for immediacy drew me again to the Polaroid. I focused on objects seemingly humble, precious to me. I am not a photographer. Yet, taking pictures has given me a sense of unity and personal satisfaction. They are relics of my life, souvenirs of my wandering, and the photos are most rewarding when viewed as a visual diary or a sketchbook. 
This is why I said there's so many important things to take from Patti Smith's photography. And first and foremost is to remind ourselves, what is a photograph? Is the capture of a moment in time. And so sometimes these moments and these things that we capture can be as mundane and as trivial as a hand, a kiss, a chair, clothes, shoes. And so looking at Patti Smith's photos, it reminded me of how important it is to keep a visual diary for ourselves and how important it is to, by taking a camera with us, by capturing those little moments that are not like compositionally interesting or spectacular or that will interest the masses, let's put it this way. They're just for ourselves and how important that is to to really rekindle our connection with photography, which sometimes can be so saturated because we try to put work out there and we do YouTube and we do this and we do that and we put books and we want to thrive for a portfolio and etc. whatever it is that we do. And sometimes we just really forget about that first love of taking a photo. And so looking at Patti Smith's photos, it's about reminding us that photography can be our visual diary. And it is our visual diary to the way we see the world. And this is very, very important. And I'd like to elaborate on this. Because to me, photography doesn't necessarily have to be something we share with others all the time. Something done in a studio or something done in a studio with expensive equipment, photography can be just a simple snap of an object or person that means so much to us. And at its core, photography is in a way ruled by emotion. And emotion is something that we share with others, but something that is also very personal to us. And so through Patti Smith's photography, I rediscovered the importance of keeping a visual diary and in between roles I shoot and share on YouTube or on my website, I began shooting yet again more private and personal photos of things and people I love. And also that contributes to my reconnection with photography at moments where I get overwhelmed and feel a pressure to be creative and put more work out there. And put more work out there. Sorry, I didn't think you could hear me. What are you doing? I'm working on my Squarespace website. Are you seriously going to interrupt us to do an ad? Well, yeah, girl, that's what we agreed. I didn't agree to anything. You're just interrupting me, and that is rude. Oh, here we go. We've upset the princess again. I'm so sorry. But can I just ask you one question? One tiny little question. Have you ever heard of Squarespace? Mm. Oh my god, girl. Have you been living under a rock or something? Because Squarespace is the only place you can go if you need a website, a portfolio, or an online store. You can use all the different beautiful templates or even kickstart your own blog by sharing your ideas or secret recipes for a good film soup. It's really simple to set up and you can do it all yourself in no time. And should you run into a roadblock, don't worry because the 24-7 customer service will have your back. So yeah, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and before you sign up, go to squarespace.com slash tHopper and you can use the code tHopper for 10% off your first purchase. Now, isn't that a good deal? Hmm? I don't know. I guess so. Nice shirt, Sherlock. Oh, come on, girl. You're always so difficult. I take lots of photographs. It's part of my life but I think of myself as an amateur. There's nothing wrong with being an amateur. I take them with all the photography knowledge I have and with a certain aesthetic. But I wouldn't compare myself to people who devoted their whole life principally to photography. Sometimes people will say my photos are blurry, they are a focus or they're too soft focus, but my pictures look exactly like I want them to look. I'm not trying to change the world with photography. I'm just taking photographs I think have a certain amount of beauty. And beauty, according to Patti Smith, should never be defined as it is everywhere. A street urchin, 
might be beautiful, but also the wife of Irving Penn in his fashion photographs of the 1950s. Robert Frank showed us beauty in the streets, in the subway. Diane Harbus showed us beauty in the mental ward. You find it sometimes in a gesture of kindness. Genius mathematicians, when they do a theorem that none of us can understand, what do they say? It was a beautiful equation. They see their mathematical equations as a thing of beauty. It really is wherever you want to see it. So this has been all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned. I really enjoyed going through Patti Smith's work, her perspective on life, her art, her photos of very meaningful places and things. And also, of course, um, I'd like to say stay tuned for more episodes of White Noise this series we've got going on, really, really interesting, the works that we're gonna explore. And I'm gonna close this video now. So my Instagram and my links will be down below if you'd like to take a look at my work. And yeah, I'll say my goodbyes now. So stay safe, keep shooting film, and I'll see you here for another video very soon. Peace. <laughs>